got four topics today, four of them. It's going to be Mark Meadows. It's going to be Ivana Trump, Ivana Trump. We're going to talk about witness tampering, the Donald, and then also this hub and spoke theory of crime uh, organizations from Glenn Kirshner. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So yeah, this should go pretty quickly, although it's four topics, but Mark Meadows, okay? He was caught in just that moment when he turned from trying to appease his crazy boss by just uh, uh, trying to find ways that uh, those accusations uh, might be investigated to now, or then, at the turning point, looking for loopholes in the Constitution. That's got to be good, so we'll do that. Then Ivana Trump. It's sad. You know what? I, maybe it's better that she doesn't see her kids go to jail. But uh, we'll do a draw on Ivana Trump, and uh, worth over $100 million, apparently. So that could be the saving grace for a couple of those kids. Uh, Ivanka's pretty well set, uh, but Eric and um, Don Jr. maybe could use that cash soon. Uh, then we're going to talk about Donald Trump's witness tampering, actually, with um, Cassidy Hutchison. So we'll do a draw on that. And then finally, if you haven't watched Glenn Kirshner um, and to see his uh, theory of the hub and spoke uh, crime um, organization, he brought this up back in last April. And then another um, attorney who'd been working with Robert Mueller, I've forgotten his name right now, but he brought it up more recently. And uh, Glenn Kirshner just did a rehash of what he did in April. So you should go over to his channel. But we'll do a poll on that hub and spoke. Fascinating. Talk a little bit during the cards too. So hope you like it. All right, so we're going to use this uh, Revival Art Tarot, and uh, these would be four very interesting subjects, I think. And these cards are beautiful, so it'll be nice to uh, look at these uh, while we uh, do the um, do the readings. You can't help but uh, love these cards. So we're going to talk about four things. Let me put my cheat sheet up here where I can look at it. So Mark Meadows. It seems like there was a point that Cassidy Hutchison recognized as when he turned from just trying to appease his crazy boss's um, ideas to actually looking for a constitutional loophole. So uh, we'll talk about that. Ivana Trump, you know, poor soul. I mean, I guess good for her. She, she found a way to make herself rich. Uh, she made a fortune after she left with Donald Trump's $25 million from the settlement and the house. And, uh, and the child support, but uh, she went out, they say, with over $100,000. So let's uh, do a reading on Ivana. And then uh, witness tampering, uh, the Donald. Ivana came up with that name for him. So Donald's witness tampering, and then finally, that hub and spoke theory, and I'll talk about more of that uh, while I'm doing that particular draw. So uh, right now, Mark Meadows, Mark Meadows, Mark that I was gonna get that card. So Mark Meadows. First, a little meditation. So Mark Meadows, let's do how many cards? Let's do six cards on Mark Meadows. And um, who do we want to know? Is he going to, I mean, as it turns out, um, Michael Cohen, sir, time. 
and you can bet that uh, Trump is going to want to hang this on Mark Meadows and um, that Eastman guy. And Mo Brooks too, probably. So six cards, Mark Meadows. What can the cards tell us about his fate, really? It's two, three, four, five, and six. Mark Meadows, his fate. I've got something loose here that's shaking, and um, I should have fixed it before I started the video, but I'm sure you can hear it shaking back and forth every time I move the table. Sorry. Okay, so signifier card for Mark Meadows, uh, his fate for, for all of this. When he actually switched, he clicked over and started looking for those loopholes. Maybe it was always there. So this starts out with the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is just feeling trapped and that's the signifier and that's perfect because I think that was the moment when he realized the only thing he had left that he could possibly do was to look for a way to actually facilitate Trump through any kind of loophole he could find and push it through feeling trapped eight of swords swords of truth justice rules and law and Mark Meadows was just encircled by all of that what's funny is that this card can always find a way out if they notice their binds are not so tight this woman can you know get her head together and step up and walk out of the situation. And he could have done the same. Tell the truth. The uh, challenge to that then, for, oh, sorry, two cards. So I just got one. The challenge to that, feeling trapped, is uh, this queen of coins. You know, coins are value. The queen is um, the uh, woman who's uh, st steadfastly in control of her value, very methodical in what she's going to do with that information. And uh, it's this, this feeling trap is challenged by this. So I think he didn't have this uh, strength uh, on his side uh, to, to make that happen. If he had, he could have chosen a different outcome. I mean, look what the guy did. He became chief of staff to the president of the United States. So whatever uh, bungling uh, person he is, um, he got somewhere. The uh, base of this reading then with this eight of wands and the eight of wands is, uh, you know, wands are actions, uh, plans, forward movement. And the eight of wands is just lots of things coming at you at the same time. And that's the absolute base of this reading. And so you can see that all the plans, all the actions, all the deadlines were barreling down on him. And that was the bottom, that was the base, that was the support of his whole uh, uh, existence at this point. All those issues. And he was just holding his head, scrolling through his phone, and he'd given up. The past to that reading for Mark Meadows, what will his fate be, really? Uh, with his five of coins, ah, uh, the f coins are value, um, uh, worth, money, could be money too for him and the five of coins is feeling left out in the cold and look at these people they're outside begging at the door look at this none of these cards except for the queen is particularly hopeful but i just think that's something he needed to aspire to and, and didn't have it in him to get there in the sky of this reading from mark meadows his fate look at that death the number 13 the major arcana end of a cycle. That's what death is. It's a definite end of a cycle. Something else is going to happen, but you know, it's not a happy uh, end. It's not like, oh, the uh, Ferris wheel ride is finished and we'll get off and do something else fun. No, this is death. This is the end. This is a stop. And that's what's in the sky. That's the best to hope for. And then the likely outcome of all of this for Mark's fate is this Eight of Cups. Very interesting because the cups are compassion, emotion, and the Eight of Cups is kind of building. Um, a shelter for that, uh, uh, making, um, leaving, uh, typically depicted in the Rider Waite deck as someone uh, turning their back on several cups with just a couple of cups left. So you've got to bid goodbye to the compassion, the safety, the harbor that he knew, you know, that emotional harbor and, uh, and go off on something um, that he doesn't feel is as advantageous. And that's exactly where he is, and that's where he's going to be. So he's going to make a deal. That's what it means. So to read this again from Mark Meadows, so he's signified by the Eight of Swords, really feeling trapped. Really, he's not. Just tell the truth. And it's uh, challenged by be in charge of your value. Be in charge of your value like this Queen of, of Coins, and just he doesn't have it in him until maybe very late. Underpinning all of this with this Eight of Wands are all the problems. In the past, is left out in the cold. There's nowhere else to turn, he felt like. In the sky of this reading, 
death. It's over, okay? It's time that there's a reckoning going to happen. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing is that he's got to leave some kind of what he ever considered a compassionate shelter behind and go off with just a very little to continue with. That's where he's at. And maybe that's his reputation. Very little is left. So Mark Meadows, uh, that's what we got for him. Ivana Trump. So this is kind of the Trump success story. There's not many that touch him, except, of course, for Melania. There you go. Uh, that come out well. His other wife, uh, oh, what was it, the actress, uh, Marla Maples. Uh, I think she uh, divorced with a $1,000 settlement and some sort of uh, limited support. So Ivana and, uh, of course, Melania. But let's stay with Ivana. Ivana really came out like a trooper on her association with Donald. Um, uh, so I think you've got to have that same um, ruthless drive uh, to exist in his world and come out of it okay. So let's get let's get four cards for Ivana. Okay. This will be one. These two want to come together. I usually don't like to do that, but I'll take them both. Two, three, four. I felt those cards needed to be married together. Let's see what we got. So the, sig the first card up for Ivana Trump. I don't know, just whatever the cards can tell us. So this is the seven of coins. Isn't that typical? Coins are value, worth. Um, uh, wondering if you have you done enough and don't you think she had to go out of it with having raised those kids wondering did, had she done enough look where they ended up should she have not um, turned them over to Donald how could she know but that had to be she had to be tortured in her last years probably along those lines about the kids the next card up for Ivan Ivana is the Three of Coins, and the Three of Coins is building something together for public display. Remember, these are the two cards that were kind of married together that wanted to come out of the stack, aren't they? No, it's these two. But anyway, it still makes me think of uh, cards that, that are associated with, the other, with each other for a good reason. So Three of Coins value putting something together for public display. So this is exactly along the same lines as did I do enough? I put those kids together, uh, together with Donald. And uh, was this, this is what, after all, once you're gone, if you have children, that's what's left of you. That's, that's the remembrance of you, isn't it? Next card for Ivana Trump with this uh, page of swords. You know, swords are truth, justice, rules, law. The page is the very weakest of the court cards. I think she's started to instill that in those kids, but of course, her ruthless nature to begin with had to skew whatever lessons, whatever life lessons she was trying to instill in those kids to begin with, enough so that once they got under the hand of Donald, it wasn't a big, a big uh, leap for them to continue on to something uh truly nefarious. And so that page of swords, that very weak offer of truth, justice, rules, and law, that's the next thing that comes up for her. And uh, I guess that's what she, that's the most she can instill in those kids. Someone, uh, some famous person, I think it was Jane Fonda, once said uh, in her 60s or maybe older, she finally realized, because she had some issues with her, her upbringing, that her parents did what they could. Regardless of whether it was good or bad, they did the best they could. All of our parents even if they've done a terrible job, left you abandoned and naked out in the cold, that's the best they could do at that time. That's what they were capable of. Uh, the final card for Ivana Trump is um, this Ten of Cups. Well, look at that. So it ends up, uh, cups are, um, again, value, emotional value, uh, compassion. And with this Ten of Cups, it's like the ultimate, I guess she went out, Finally, understanding that um, it's it's happy family, okay, it's generational uh, happiness, and uh, the, I guess she went out thinking, regardless of all the other issues, she did the best she could, and there was value in it what she did do. Interesting. So that's Ivana. Now, Donald Trump's witness tampering. I have got to fix this jiggling uh, piece of furniture that I've got here once this reading's over because I can't. Uh, do another reading with this jing 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 going on. So, witness tampering, Donald Trump. Donald Trump, witness tampering. Donald Trump, witness tampering. This has to be six cards because it's just too much. And um, is this going to be one of the things that takes him apart, this witness tampering? It has to be proven 
just the fact that he tried to contact somebody isn't quite enough. But uh, let's see, Donna's tr Donald Trump and the witness tampering, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Donald Trump, witness tampering. Okay. See what we have here. A dyadic cross signifier card, Donald Trump and witness tampering. Okay, the Queen of Wands. Wands are actions, uh, forward movement, um, plans, um, things happening. The Queen of Wands is um, is is a woman who's very much um, uh, going to make some things move, going to make some things happen. So <clears throat> Donald Trump. <clears throat> And his witness tampering is almost kind of a uncontrollable uh, fetish to um, to tamper uh, with those uh, actions to get something going. Signifier. <clears throat> the uh, challenge to that with his page of wands again a very weak offer a movement forward and uh, the challenge to this queen of wands who's very much going to be in charge of getting things going is trying to rein himself back to being this page of wands. With just a message. No, he can't be that. Uh, that's the challenge. He can't rein himself in to be just a page of wands. He comes up as an emotional queen of wands. Then uh, the wow, the basis of this whole thing for him and his witness tampering is it's all a tower moment. It's all a disaster. It's all a situation that would have to be recovered from. So the the underpinning of all of this is the crumbling tower, Trump Tower. The uh, past of this reading then with the seven of swords, the swords of truth, justice, rules, and law, and the seven of swords is theft of betrayal. So that's what they were coming from. That's what this, these cards are working with, the theft of betrayal. That was in the past. That set it up for everything that's happening now. In the sky of this reading for Donald Trump's witness tampering is this five of coins left out in the cold. And that's exactly where he thinks his best uh, that th things are going to happen at best. He's worried to death that he's going to be left out in the cold. Final outcome for Donald Trump's witness tampering is this five of swords. And again, swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. And the five of swords is an abuse of power. So the very best that can come out of this is this proof of an abuse of power. Signified Donald Trump witness tampering. Signified by the Queen of Wands. That's who he has to be. He can't keep his fingers out of it. He has to meddle, move, plan, make things happen. Uh, it's challenged by be the page of wands. Have some, uh, bring it down, but he can't. He has to be the queen. Um, the Almost like a drama queen. And then the um, underpinning of everything is the tower card. Of course it is. Past to this is the seven of swords, the um, uh, uh, um, theft of betrayal. <laughs> And then in the sky of this, the very most he can hope for is uh, feeling left out in the cold and because that's where he's going to be finally. And then uh, the final outcome is back to this abuse of power with the Five of Swords. Perfect. Now, finally, that hub and spoke uh, organization of Donald's crimes. So I included a picture in the beginning of this and maybe I can get another one up here on a corner or something. Think about it. Um, but yeah, it, it tells you basically that um, the hub is the uh, the head honcho criminal, Donald Trump. The spokes are individual participants, may not even be associated with other, may have never met, may not even have a particular common goal, except that it's all nefarious towards some utter nefarious end. In other words, everybody's not driving the car. Everybody's not going to get the gun. Everybody's doing something separately that contributes to the success of the hub. Uh, intention. Amazing. Hub and spoke. So let's do six cards for that too. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Hub and spoke. How is this? Is this going to be it? Donald. Hub and spoke organization of crime organization. The organization of a crime organization. The signified card for that. Okay, so we come out with the six of wands, victory. 
So for hub and spoke, this is victorious. And look, wands are like a spoke anyway. Their actions, their plans, their motion forward. So this uh, six of wands is the victory card. If I didn't draw one more card that says this is going to be the theory that, that does it in. The challenge to that, though, is judgment. Look at that. So the challenge to the hub and spoke uh, theory is getting the judgment. Wow. The basis of this, then, for the hub and spoke theory, uh, the wheel of fortune. The whole basis of this thing is a crapshoot as to whether they put together all the pieces and, the, and they fall in the right slots uh, to get this done. So it's still not... Well, we did have victory as a signifier, but this tells us that there's there's luck in it. The past of this reading with this King of Cups is, uh, and this is the past, emotion, cups, compassion, king. Look, all this, this huge offering of compassion is in the past. Okay? In the sky of this reading, uh, we have the Six of Cups wishing things were uh, the way they used to be. Cups, compassion, emotion. And then the final uh, outcome for this diet at cross for this hub and spoke theory is um, this ace of coins. This is the big valuable thing that's going to do it. So it's right there. Hub and spoke theory. You get the uh, six of wands, which is uh, victory. Challenged by what? Judgment. Of course it is. Uh, underpinned by what? It's it's a crapshoot still, even so. Uh, in the past, is this king of cups, this great big offering of compassion way in the past. And then up in the sky of this is what you can hope for is that things uh, with the six of cups uh, come back to the way they were when things were calmer. No, because the final outcome of this is this great big ace of coins, this great big offer of value. It's huge. This hub and spoke theory is the one. So that's my reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. You know, um, about a year or more ago, one of the readers that I watch a lot uh, was worried that uh, once Trump was out of office, uh, there wouldn't be anything to read on. And uh, it's one of the few times that I commented, and I told her, I said, you know what, there's going to be plenty of manure to shovel, and there has been, and there will continue to be. So, hope you liked uh, what happened here. Uh, leave your comments in the, um, or your uh, thoughts in the comments below. I'll read all that stuff. Thanks. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So, this is the Revival Art Tarot by Turatko Toraco or Toracho, I'm not sure, Studios. Uh, this is a deck that comes to me somehow, I think, from Russia via Norway. But um, they're beautiful cards. They were a little pricey, and um, but I love to use them. They're lots of art. The guidebook that comes with them, Revival Art Guidebook, is, um, you know, leaves a lot to be desired. You know, you can't really read it. It's tiny, tiny print. But on the uh, upside, there's nothing in here that's particularly um, earth-shattering as far as how to use the cards for divination. So, you know, no loss that it's a bad uh, guidebook. However, the cards are just amazing. And uh, the art goes right to the edge on these cards. They're really beautiful, and I love using them. And, uh, you know, I do this to sort of sort of mix up the cards and to give folks who don't uh, purchase tarot cards or look at uh, full decks of tarot cards very often the chance to see, you know, more of what the deck looks like. Otherwise, you just kind of see the first few, uh, the first, only the cards that are uh, dealt or that are turned over. So there you go. Uh, that's this uh, Toracho Revival Art Studio uh, deck. And I think they're beautiful. And I love using them. Um, they are pretty, pretty cool. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.